please, please, take my wife. Take my wife. Oh, oh, oh. Guy walks into a bar. Pri 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 priest and a rabbi. But seriously, why these kids today? So where are you from? With their hair and their clothes. Did you, did you, did you, did you ever notice? Thank you, good night. But, but seriously. And now, comics only. The show that features comics only. Tonight's guests are Ken Ober and Wayne Fetterman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Provenza. Welcome to Comics Only. Thanks for being here. Say hello to Fred Wolf, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Fred hello. Wolf, ladies and gentlemen. Tell them how much I appreciate it. What do you say? Who's, uh, who are we bringing out first here? Uh, Kenny. Ken. All right. Our first guest this evening, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen him on MTV's Remote Control. You've seen him on Parenthood. You've seen him in clubs and colleges all over the country. A very funny man. Welcome our good friend, Ken Ober. Ken? Paul? How are you? Good, Paul. I need one of those, you know, show business like Sinead O'Connor does like this and Shirley MacLaine, you know. <laughs> what, <laughs> what is it that Shirley MacLaine no, does? They, all, you don't, they don't just wave, they do like, you know, Sinead O'Connor does something weird. I need to adopt oh, I like have a little squat one. or something. I have a little one. What do you do? I go... Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> you had it a just bald, evolved. If you had a bald head, it would work. So, <laughs> how are you? Good, you. That's, I'm surprised how many people are not aware that you started as a stand-up comedian. Right, right, including my agency. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I did. That's that's basically how I got going, and did it for a while. You still doing it? No, I I haven't done it in almost two years. So you're not a comic anymore. I know. I, I get out. I, I, get out. I'm sorry. That's your other show for ex comics only. You know? <laughs> I know you still do stand-up. You just don't go on the road that much. Yeah, I just I just I actually have it down to the. I remember the exact moment. I decided not to do stand-up comedy anymore. It was in Winnipeg, Canada. And I was working... We, we, so right, exactly. Right, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Did, uh, I thought there was more base here. Did you, uh, did you work this club? Yes. Did you have any trouble with immigration? Yes. yes. See, you, have to, you need working papers to be a comedian in Canada. So the club is supposed to set it up. I was detained for an hour and a half to tell jokes about, you know, State police, you know, they had me in a room. I ended up paying 50 bucks to buy my own working papers. No cash. Club, of course, said they would reimburse me. To this day, I'm waiting for that check. It's two years ago. <laughs> and you need cash Right, now. right, of course. Right. And I'm sitting in a, you know, in a hotel that's 20 below in Winnipeg. People actually have to plug their cars in to heat them up. To, you know, I mean, it was horrible. I, all I would do all day long was sit in the window of my hotel room and watch the time and temperature change at the bank across the street and try and time my blink so I would only see the time. <laughs> and not the temperature. I get really good at it, too. And, and no, you know, nothing against Canadians, but they just... Uh, oh, slam them. Who cares? Well, you know, it's like hockey, women, and beer. And not necessarily... It's a rotating order. You check the paper every day. It's like a floating rate. And uh, it was just horrible. I ended up... Towards the end of the week, I met a waitress, oddly enough. And... Uh, that's one of the comedians and waitresses. I mean, it's like, you know, first ladies and presidents. They're just destined. And uh, so I went to a Winnipeg Jets game with this woman, and uh, we were really hitting it off. And we come home at night, uh, you know, beautiful day. And I'm, we're in the garage of the hotel, and I hear this slam on the car door. And it's her drunk fiancé who she neglected to tell me about, you know, and so it was just, it was, you know, and being the manly man that I am, I just sprinted up to my room as fast as I could, and I, I was at the door going, I can't do stand-up anymore, that's it, it's over, so that was the exact moment with a, you know, a drunk Canuck, you know, trying to get my name at the register. <laughs> By the way, the, uh, the hotel in Winnipeg, the greatest name for a hotel ever, the Viscount Gort. <laughs> yes, hotel I can't believe the Viscount remember. Gort. Right. I, I still have soap. From it, <laughs> you're afraid to use it. Ooh, the gort. So you know, when you open it up and it has hair on it, you know you've got. To... <laughs> you've got a question. The... What was your first television break? You remember? Um, yeah, pretty much uh, after I had been doing stand up, and I, I got a commercial. I started working in the commercial, getting commercials, which uh, are very lucrative, but very embarrassing. I mean, you, you find yourself in like, remember one, I was, uh, you have to go back a number of times for auditions and callbacks, and I was in like in a lemon suit in front of these executives for a major soft drink company, and they're like yelling at me because I don't know how to get into a styrofoam lemon. Like, this is something I should know from life experience. You know, and I ripped it, and they're like, get into the lemon, you know, I'm like, all right. You know, 
<laughs> and uh, uh, I actually did, I think my first commercial was a coffee commercial. I was pretty nervous, you know, and I had one of these directors that thought he was like directing a feature, you know, he was like Francis Ford Coppola. He's like, all right, now I want to see the coffee enter your body, okay? <laughs> Sense it in the room, then let it bring you up. And I'm like, all right, well, what about the cream? <laughs> Don't, no cream! You know, he's like, <laughs> psycho director, the crew's behind him laughing, you know, like, he was German and it was just, it was, you know, <laughs> that was, you know, it was hell. It was, then another horrible experience, too, I, I did a mouthwash commercial, and I had to make out with the uh, female, who I swear to this day was a guy. <laughs> I swear that she had had a sex change operation. And I was, I, I was talking to the cameraman, I'm going, get a tight shot of her Adam's apple, and let me know what you think. And I saw him <laughs> lean over, and he went, you know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> kind of make you long for those lemon seeds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me some citrus, I was saying to myself. But I wouldn't give her a line. It's so, did you study theater in college? Yeah, that's see, what I... See, they that, don't tell you that did, Now, did you? Did you, you, know, you, want to, you think you, you want to be an actor, and you think that's what you, you want to do. And 90% of the work is putting on a fruit suit. Right, ex or one way or the other. And, uh, <clears throat> and I, uh, I studied... <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where you don't even know what it means, but they somehow do. <laughs> that's, what I, that's why audiences are so much smarter than comedians. You know, miles ahead of us. I studied theater education. I ended up getting a, th a teaching certificate, a theater teacher, you know, which is useless, totally useless. I mean, in, at the high school level, which is, you know, like just saying, get beat up after school in the parking lot, you know. <laughs> and I, actually, there was a point after, after college where I wanted to join Vista or CARE. And I remember I got the application because, you know, I felt like I should give something back to the world and, you know, you know, what my skill was teaching drama, and I was going to go to, like, Gambia and teach these natives, you know, how to do Sh Sam Shepard one act, you know. It's like, <laughs> you go, I know you have no food, but you really are in the moment there, Zabida, you know. It's like, <laughs> it's like so I, I don't even know where my diploma is. Must have been great for all your former students to see you hosting Remote Control and going, he's a game show host. Yeah, I, I know. The man is a game show yeah. host. And we listened to him. He graded us. <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. That was, uh, it was one of those, you know, when I got the MTV show, it was, uh, to be a game show host is like, I never realized how heavy a label that is. You know, it's like the witness protection program. This is something you'll never shake off, you know, for the rest of your life. And it, I remember the first time I was on, I was on some talk show, and it, I looked at the TV guy, and it said, Ken Ober, comma, game show host, and I'm like, going, oh, no, that's the end of my career. The rest of my life, I'm going to have that bonded teeth and the same tie, you know, like this. And it was, it actually turned out to be all right, but you know, you, certain moments, like I found myself, I was at a cocktail party one time in a tuxedo. Wink Martindale was here, and two of the prize women from Price is Right were over here, and I had a gimlet in my hand going to Wink Martindale. Yeah, I know what you mean. And at you know, that moment, I had like an out of body experience. I was going, kill yourself! You know, kill yourself! <laughs> we'll be right oh. back with Wayne Fetterman. Thanks for being here, Ken Olber.